breakfast, I am at the Oyster Bar inside Palace Station. If you really know where to go eat in Las Vegas, you know to come here. This place is open 24 hours a day and there is a line 24 hours a day. Right now the line is about a one to two hour wait. And this is about 10 in the morning. What they do here is of course, well, they have oysters, but what they're really known for are their stews, where seafood goes in along with their house clam broth, tons of seasoning and spices. And I got their top three, starting with the gumbo. Inside this thing, there's shrimp, there's a lobster tail, and dewy sausage, okra, crab. And the way they make this, it's like a performance itself. There's six pots going at the same time cooking up these stews. Everybody sit at a bar. There's only about 20 seats. So after you get your stews, you tell them the level of heat that you want from one through 10. I got seven. It's still early in the morning. The roux is so rich and thick. You can see the shreds of crab in here. And that adds a tiny bit of hint of sweetness. Of course, as for level seven, there is plenty of heat in this gumball. Every bite, you're bound to pick up some sausage or seafood or okra. The sausage is nice and snappy. Really delightful crunch from the okra. Mm. And the lobster tail. Oh. That's outrageous. I mean, this texture, consistency, flavor. I feel like I'm in New Orleans. This is masterful gumbo. There's also white rice. Take some of the rice, mix it in to the gumbo. This is one heck of a wake you up type of breakfast. Mm. And this is the third most popular. This is so good. Their second most popular is the Buya base. This is a shellfish stew. There's shrimp, crab, lobster, codfish, mussels, clams, all the seafood is just sticking out of the surface of that delicious stew. Oh my gosh. And by, and by crab, they mean king crab. So much good stuff in here. This might be one of the greatest seafood stews I ever put in my mouth. Wow. My taste buds basically had an out-of-body experience. I haven't even had the seafood yet. This broth right here, that's gonna leave you absolutely speechless. You taste all that awesome umami from the shellfish. You can taste all that in here. And that is balanced out by the zesty sweet tomatoes. The heat then makes an appearance and just burns your tongue in just a perfect temperature. I like seven. I think seven is really, really, really good. And just the overall, everything about this, I don't even know exactly what's in here. I know there's some alcohol in here as well to kind of add to the depth of this too. But this is some crazy next level flavor in a bowl. And again, this is all before even eating the seafood. Let's try it with some king crab or some celery here as well. Wow. This is too crazy. With every bite of seafood, you get that added sweetness from the seafood. From the sweet shrimp to the king crab to the lobster to the flakes of cod that are just kind of swimming around in this bowl. Everything does what it's supposed to do. Everything provides a unique texture or flavor. This is just the greatest thing. Again, a little rice goes in. Oh my gosh. This is perfect with rice as well. And uh, there's a little secret technique you gotta do if you ever come here. I'll show you that in just a second. But I got two more plates to try and they're getting a little cold. So let me just taste this next, the clam chowder. Look at this chowder. Oh my 
goodness, this thing gets just loaded with clams. Clams, potatoes, not just small little bitty clams either. These are ginormous chunks. Of course, they make everything in-house. Every smooth you put in your mouth, you're gonna get a lot of clams. Needy sweet clams just swimming and the ultimate creamy clam chowder. Oh, I love this so much. I know I'm gonna love it even more. That is some hot sauce. Another one? It's too good. So much clams. I mean, it's too much clams ever a bad thing in a clam chowder. I don't think so. And I think they're definitely trying to test out that theory in this bowl. This is amazing chowder. Finally, this is my last stew. This is a pan roast. Inside, crab, shrimp, lobster, all making their regularly scheduled appearance. And what's special about the pan roast, the way they describe it to me is that it's kind of like a lobster bisque, but so much better. One sip of this will send chills down your spine. Oh my gosh. You taste a sweet, smoky flavor of the roasted tomatoes. And of course that deep, rich, seafoody umami. This thing is rich, it's creamy. Basically a combination of every good flavor in the world inside a bowl. Wow. And that smoky flavor just never lets up. I mean, I've had seafood stews before. I've had bouillabaisse. bases. I never had a pan rose, but ain't nothing like I had here. There's a reason why people line up sometimes for six hours to eat this. And again, they're open 24 hours a day. There's a line 24 hours a day. The secret technique they told me about, what they told me was you mix the bouillabaisse base and the pan rose to make a bouillabaisse roast. So I'm gonna take a separate bowl just to make sure I get this right. Fill it up with some pan roast. Mix it together. That is the ultimate combo. That that tastes like in the superhero world. If Superman joined forces with, I don't know, Captain Marvel, the pan rolls brings that ultimate smokiness. The Booyah Brace brings even more umami from the shellfish. Basically creating the most ultimate seafood stew in existence. I've been to Vegas many times before. Did not know about this place till now. And I'm telling you guys, don't make the same mistake I did. When you're in Vegas, come here and get this and put them together. I feel like, I feel like if these things touch, like it'll just be like Vegeta and Goku performing fusion or something. All right, I'm gonna finish eating and see you guys for dinner. Before dinner though, stopping by for a quick dessert this is gonna be really cool. I am at Max's because I hear they have an amazing hollow. Hollow, I haven't had one in quite a bit. Oh, here it comes now. Well, thank you. Thank you. You don't have a size bigger than this? I mean, why settle for a regular hollow hollow where you can have the granddaddy of all hollow hollows? This thing has over a dozen ingredients on top of shaped ice. There's ube jam all around this cup. There's heart of palm, there's jackfruit, yellow beans, red beans, shredded coconuts, palm seed, jackfruit, tons of condensed milk, of course, ube ice cream. There's coconut ice cream, shredded coconut on top. There's at least 10 pounds of hala hala. This is probably the only hala hala I've ever had in my life where it requires a ladle. Let's dig in. Start with some palm seed and some wube ice cream. Mm. 
First of all, ice cream's delicious. Coconut ice cream, mubei ice cream. Very iconic flavors in a halo halo. Normally something this big will kind of intimidate me a little bit. I love halo halo so much. I try to dig a little deeper, dig into the ice, get some beans in there. On my way out, get some ice cream as well. Mm. Beans are really good, a little starchy and sweet. Really nice chew. And usually what you do with halo halo, you mix the whole thing up and eat it like that. But this thing is overflowing. So, I had to kind of eat a little bit, sink this down a little. So far, everything about this is so good. All the different ingredients and jellies and fruits and beans provides different types of texture and sweetness. Let me work on this a little bit. I think this has gotten low enough where I could kind of start mixing everything together. And since hala hala literally means a mix mix, I give this thing a pretty darn good mix. All the ice cream ingredients, the shaved ice, the condensed milk, everything is mixed together. Now it's ready to be fully enjoyed. Ooh. Especially coming from the 100 degree Vegas heat. This is so freaking refreshing. Mm. And Halo Halo is one of these dessert items that to me, it's just the best mix of the dessert world. I mean, if you're craving ice cream, you crave shaved ice, you're craving some jellies, maybe some fruit, this has it all. I've been walking around the Vegas heat for about a week now. I think this is the first time in that week that my internal temperature felt completely cooled down. This is just one of the most satisfying desserts in the world. They do it so well here. It's such a fun thing to eat, especially in a Sunday cup made for Godzilla. Steakhouse. I tried their all-you-can-eat brunch buffet. Had to come in and try the steakhouse experience as well. This is one of the most highly rated steakhouses here in Las Vegas and it's so beautiful. You can see right into the kitchen. There's prime ribs sitting right there. Starting off with this. Look at that. This is the seafood plate. Two oysters, two jumbo shrimp, couple chill lobsters, and king crab. And also, look at this, little Tabasco sauce. Little lemon juice everywhere. King crab laid out like Stonehenge. A little mayonnaise sauce into the oyster. Let's go ahead and add some cocktail sauce and horseradish as well. Mm. This whole thing is so fresh. Tasting like something like this in the middle of Las Vegas. It's a very uniquely satisfying experience. Giant cocktail shrimp, dunk it into the cocktail sauce as well. From the buffet, I remember, I love their freshly grated horseradish. Mm. <laughs> that shrimp is just so sweet. And they are definitely known for their lobster here. Comes right out of the shell. This thing, splash of lemon juice, really all you need. Mm. And this might be even sweeter. Fresh king crab. Again, a little squeeze of lemon juice. That's probably the only thing in the ocean that's sweeter than a lobster. Next dish, the crab cakes. This thing, oh my gosh, this thing is just loaded with actual crab. That's always a good sign when you cut into a crab cake. Mm. Oh, this is such a good crab cake. Filled with crab, with such a light, slightly crunchy outer shell. Inside, just pure, sweet crab meat. Mmm. One of the best crab cakes I've had at any steakhouse. That's so good. The 
entrees are here and everything is, this is so overwhelming right now. First of all, wild stir fry mushrooms that look so good. Then 30 ounce porterhouse with shishito peppers. They said this is a highly recommended item. This is the sear sea bass on top of some bok choy, some mushrooms. And this is just the most ultimate plate. A jumbo monster 22 ounce roasted lobster tail and king crab maris. So apparently here you can order regular king crab or maris king crab. And the maris is like the, the thigh of the king crab where all the nice giant chunks of meat reside. I know what our steakhouse, but I really gotta give this fish a try. Cause I feel like the, the top is seared so well. Oh, look how beautifully that is seared. Oh my gosh. You do not need any effort at all breaking apart this sea bass. Look at how delicate and flaky the meat is with a, again, that beautiful golden sear on top. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my gosh, the so gripping up. On the bottom, a bit of mushrooms, little peppers. This is such a sensation as soon as it goes in your mouth. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys can hear that crunch. That's that golden crunchy sear. We definitely taste that light sweetness and the meat inside is just, I didn't think sea bass could be this tender. The sauce that they seared this with is sesame soy. Well, it's a little sweet sesame soy. You definitely taste that sweet, rich umami of the sauce. And then again, as delicious as the flavor is, the seared, the doneness of the fish is immaculate. If you like fish, try this fish. Amazing. All right, now let's cut into the steak. Filet on one side, strip on the other. Oh my gosh. Can you tell how tender this is? Just from poking it with the fork. Oh my goodness. The steak is perfectly cooked. Give it a little squeeze and all that hidden juice just comes to the surface. And they sear this right away in this charcoal, it looks like wood charcoal grill. And then it's popped into the ovens until it's fully cooked, then put it back on the grill once more. And then it's not only just salted, it's also covered in what they call duck butter. Oh my gosh, this strip looks so amazing. I love how there's a giant bowl in the middle, giving it even more flavor. And as I'm talking about this, the smokiness, aroma of the steak just pelting me. Mm. That's so crazy good. That just makes you want to close your eyes and fully, fully immerse yourself with the flavor of the steak. Filet, beautifully tender, with such an amazing crust on the outside. Again, you definitely taste the smoke of the wood. That smoky flavor right away makes the steakhouse really different from a lot of other ones I've been to. And this, this crust is just beautiful. Look, this piece on the outside, it's just all fat right here. I love steak with some fat. That's what makes porterhouses so awesome. One side, lean and tender. Other side, beautifully fatty. And that butter they lay on the steak. Holy moly. It has this irresistible, addictive quality that when combined with the smoke, you don't want to stop eating this. Everything about this is just marvelous. Chase it with some shishito peppers. Hmm. Oh, that shishito pepper not only has smoke, that has some heat too. I honestly been wanting to try this steakhouse for so long. Yeah, this steak is very uniquely delicious. That steak was so good, I totally forgot. I had a giant sea monster of a lobster tail sitting here. Look at the king crab. Again, marriage king crab, the top part of the leg of the king crab. Crack it open. A little bit of lemon juice. Crab marish, the meatiest part of the crab leg. If you love king crab, I highly recommend getting that option. And then here we are, 22 ounce Cheyenne Jumbo Lobster.
I love it when something looks amazing and tastes even better. And that's 100% the lobster tail right here. And if you come to their Sunday brunch, you get smaller versions of this, but it's all you can eat. What an amazing steakhouse. One of the juiciest, smokiest I've ever had. Seafood is delicious. The fish, come here and get that fish. This is one of those dining experiences that you will definitely not forget. There's a couple of signature desserts they recommended. One is a creme brulee, and it has like a white chocolate dome on top. The other is their apple dumplings with vanilla ice cream. Look at, this is so pretty though. Look at this beautiful chocolate dome, and you can just crack it open where they suggested lift it. Berries, fruit, creme brulee on the bottom. Crack the creme brulee. Oh, that's some of the best creme brulee I've ever had. That's just absolute creme brulee perfection. Perfect caramelized outer shell. The creme brulee is so creamy and tender. Oh, this apple dumpling is too good. Like a much more delicious mini apple pie. Creme brulee with that cracked dome top. White chocolate dome. I think goes pretty well with the creme brulee. I definitely recommend trying the creme brulee on its own first before you add the dome. Work. You don't have to add the dome. Work. You can eat the dome separately. It's delicious however you eat it. This place, I say a must try steakhouse here in Las Vegas. And once you finish with your fish and steak, definitely stay for dessert. And as always guys, all the places I went to listen down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.